Welcome to Living Life. I'm glad that you are able to join us today. The question of belonging, as well as identity, has seen an incredible increase of importance as well as attention in recent years. But people have wrestled with the question of who am I? Why do I exist and what is the purpose of my life? Probably since the beginning of humanity. And there are different aspects as well as factors that play a role in defining our identity and how we view ourselves. Ethnicity and immigration status, educational background, our occupation and career, socioeconomic standing, age as well as relationship status, to just mention a few. Growing up in Germany as a second-gen Korean uh, German, I myself also wrestled with identity questions. It was obvious to me that I am not German. Um, but I was very much confused when I first uh, traveled to Korea and people started referring to me as the German kid. I didn't think like Koreans did. I didn't act like Koreans and I also had a hard time speaking the language, you know, understanding, communicating. Yet, at the same time, I loved kimchi bokkeumbap. And even to this day, I love samgyeopsal, uh, pork belly. And no meal for me is complete without uh, soy bean paste stew, which sounds a lot less appetizing than tenjang jjigae. The question of who am I, the wrestling with my identity continued for a while, uh, but was finally answered and resolved as I met, encountered, and accepted Christ as my personal Savior and Lord. Today's passage from uh, Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus and in the opening of the letter, he reminds them, as well as us today, that our identity is found in Christ and Christ alone. Let us read today's passage together. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, to God's holy people in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For He chose us in Him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in His sight. In love, He predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with His pleasure and will, to the praise of His glorious grace, which He has freely given us in the one He loves. In Him, we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that He lavished on us. With all wisdom and understanding, He made known to us the mystery of His will according to His good pleasure, which He purposed in Christ, to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfillment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. In Him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of Him, works out everything in conformity with the purpose of His will, in order that we, who were the first to put our hope in Christ, might be for the praise of His glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in Him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's position, to the praise of His glory. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God. This is not the only time Paul uses his formula at the beginning of a letter to introduce himself as well as to extend greetings. And even though I'm so familiar with these opening words that I've found in almost all the beginnings of his letters with some variation, Yet I'm profoundly moved every time I read them. Paul introduces himself and proclaims his new identity that he found in Christ. Formerly known as Saul in Acts 22, we hear from Paul personally, speaking about his former life before he met Christ. An educated and influential Jew as well as Pharisee, zealous to persecute, imprison, and bring to death Christians. A Roman citizen. 
Yet we find him declaring in his letter to the church in Philippi that everything that his world might consider to be of worth, he considers to be a loss and even garbage compared to the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus. And it is in him and through him that Paul found his new identity. What is your identity? How do you define yourself? Are you a teacher, a nurse, a lawyer, an Uber driver, or a student? Are you someone's son or just someone's daughter? The financial provider for your family, have you become simply mom or dad and hardly remember your life before you had young children? Are you someone of age and feel angry about becoming more and more dependent on the help of others, worrying that you will become a burden to the people around you that you love so much? Are you the person who fights cancer? is coming out of a difficult relationship or maybe even a divorce, had to declare bankruptcy, or maybe even most recently, you're the person who lost his job. Do you feel like a failure, a lost cause, or even invisible and voiceless? Through these verses, Paul reminds us that we are much more than that. He reminds you of your identity in Christ. And in the following verses, he reminds us that we are blessed by God, that he chose us, that before time and before we came into existence, God already knew us and that he had a purpose and plan for us, that we are forgiven and redeemed by the blood that was shed for us on the cross. And that the moment you accepted Christ as your Savior and Lord, we indeed became a new creation. As Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 5.17, the old has passed and the new is here. In verses 4, 5, and 11, Paul emphasizes that we have been chosen, selected, predestined by God. Even as he chose us, he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons and daughters. And in verse 11, having been predestined according to the purpose of him, all of this is telling us God chose you. And you are not second choice, the runt of the litter, someone that God, someone just got stuck with and he had to choose you. There's no reason to feel a chip on our shoulder or to have a bitter aftertaste in our mouth. Like, you know, like being picked last during junior high PE when we were about to play dodgeball or basketball, or to receive the pity Valentine's card in elementary from our teacher because none of our classmates prepared a Valentine's card for us. No, you are of worth. You are precious. You are beautifully and wonderfully made. You have been created in the image of God, your father who calls you son, who calls you daughter, who calls you by your name, and who also dwells within you in form of the Holy Spirit, as is being said in verses 13 to 14. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it, the praise of his glory. So if this world is trying to tell you that you need to be like everyone else in this world, that you need to play by the rules of this world, that you belong to this world, this society, and this culture, remember that you belong to God. Remember that your identity, worth, and purpose is found and defined in Christ. And if the enemy is trying to tell you that you are a failure, that you are unattractive, that there is no hope for you. Turn your back on him and turn to the Father, who today reminds you that you are his, that he loved you so much that he gave his only begotten son for you and that there is nothing that can separate you from his perfect and unconditional love.
So next time we find ourselves wondering who we are, it is my hope and prayer that we will be able to say that we are God's children, set apart for the gospel, set apart for His purpose and plan, that we will be people that will courageously and unwaveringly proclaim a new identity as a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for His own possession, people that will proclaim the excellencies of Him who called us out of darkness into His marvelous light. Let us pray together. Father, thank you for giving us a new identity in you and through your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for wiping out our past, all of our past sins, and for allowing us to have a fresh new start. Thank you for allowing us to find worth in you and through you, and that we are not dependent anymore on how this world views us, how the world measures us, and that we have been set free from having to perform and to earn any worth in this world, and that we would be able to walk into this world affirmed in our faith that we indeed are a new creation, that we are your sons and your daughters, and that we choose today as well as every day to live for your glory, your kingdom, as your people. God, we thank you, we love you, and in Jesus' prayer, name we pray, amen.